This is An Infinite Path, spoken word essays by Niles Heckman, some of which go on to become our documentary short subject films, half of which release freely here through the podcast, all of which can be found through your support at nilesheckman.com. A while back, a man named Neville Goddard gained considerable amount of prominence in the metaphysical field. His work was not as widely popular as Napoleon Hill, for example, but it was popular enough that whatever venue he spoke, people came. Neville did not charge for these lectures or seminars, as they might be called today. If to speak at a particular event travel was required, he'd request that the funds needed to travel be sent over, but he didn't charge for the information itself. In fact, he said, in language that is slightly more visceral, that those who would charge hefty sums of money for such knowledge are in fact fraudsters, and that if he were ever to do so, those in the audience should stop trusting him. You may or may not agree with this sentiment, but it informed his work, and Neville was not a man known for keeping secrets away from those who wished to learn in regards to beautiful and powerful reality-altering rituals and traditions. During the time he taught, the mid-30s to 1972, the year of his passing, he spoke of imagination as God. He insisted that the Bible was merely a story designed to share this information with the common folk of the day, while covering these ideas and metaphors that spoke directly to the heart. This was certainly not a popular or widely accepted idea, but his points were considered and his ideas were, by many accounts, revolutionary to those who chose to acknowledge and accept them. According to Neville, we are God, you are God, we are all God, and imagination is the most beautiful and potent expression of our Godhood. Through imagination, all things are possible, but we must dissolve the boundaries between that which we hold to be imaginary, a word that often refers to things that are separate from that which we consider to be real, and that which we hold to be real, for the two are one and the same. And if we dissolve those boundaries, we can create and become anything that we so desire. One can venture deeper and deeper into this infinite rabbit hole and find ideas regarding the nature of stories and fiction itself and how they are merely expressions of something that is happening in this moment. To Neville, all stories are true and all stories are coming true in this moment. Just as you can find ideas regarding the ideas of the act as if, and changing the role that you play in this cosmic drama of ours. Venture deeper and deeper, you begin to understand that Neville believed that we are always creating our reality, and that we are the creator of all that is around us and all that is entering into our lives. This is a deeply controversial idea, and while we may have our doubts and fears regarding this idea, we find that there is a significant amount of truth to it. For we do create reality and we can choose and accept someone else's reality and the beliefs and actions and ideas that such reality entails, or we can create our own. And from that, we will inevitably change the very role that we play, for all such definitions are illusory and subject to the infinite motion of impermanence of imagination. Imagination is a tool that can conjure anything, images, smells, tastes, sounds, sights, anything at all. But without the feeling that comes from such a thing, Reality remains somewhat unchanged. You see, Neville knew that you can imagine that which you desire as much as you'd like, and there is tremendous value in doing just that. Make no mistake. But without the feelings that come from the fulfillment of your desire, then there is nothing, for your feelings are language in of themselves. And if you know how to speak the language of what he called God, if you know how to speak directly to that infinite faculty within yourself, then there is nothing that can or will stop you. Furthermore, Neville made a point of saying and emphasizing the fact that imagination as receiving of your desire is not the same as imagining the fulfillment of the desire. You see, when you imagine the specific act receiving or obtaining that which you desire, you end up creating a number of blocks that severely limit that which can be created. This isn't a bad thing, but Neville made a point of emphasizing the fact that for the most success, the best results, you want to focus on the end result. The end result can be many things. For Neville, it was action that implied, in no uncertain terms, the complete fulfillment of the desire that he had in mind. 
It could be an imaginal scene in which you are being congratulated by someone due to the fulfillment of your desire. This desire could be, for example, purchasing a house or going on a somewhat life-changing trip or losing weight or anything else that's maybe not necessarily the easiest thing to accomplish. This scene is indicative of the end result, and it implies the fulfillment of your desire. Then according to Neville, you must repeat it and allow those seeds to be planted. From this, you will be led to the final step of the process, that is, essentially letting go and surrendering. And speaking from experience, we may sometimes say that this can be the hardest thing to do, especially since you have, most likely, fallen in love with your end result and what you know is coming, and you are excited and ready, but at the same time a little nervous. It isn't easy to do this, but you may find it necessary, perhaps the most necessary step of all. In this essay of ours, you are going to read a story that further affirms and gives credence to the ideas that Neville spoke of, and you will attain a greater understanding of the cosmology and the metaphysics at play here. Finally, at the end of this essay, you will have the exact process that Neville spoke of, along with a few suggestions in each step for how to best execute each step of that process. So the question is, does it actually work? This question is very much a it depends, because it may work for you, just as it had worked in the examples of many others, or it may not work for you. And whether or not it works for you depends on your willingness to accept and try this way of being and acting, but it also depends on how natural this way of being feels to you. There is no one-size-fits-all, for example. For some people, this method won't work at all. It isn't right for them. And that's totally okay. There are many methodologies and practices that may or may not do much for you. So don't use them and instead use the ones that feel natural, the ones that do provide results. Results are what's most important. However, we will say this, if you choose to accept this way of being and thinking, for one week, you may find that things are happening and what happens may surprise you. To illustrate an answer to this question, let's share a story. For a number of years, ever since a young bloke that I know was about 16, he wanted to go to the country of Cambodia, to Siem Reap specifically, where you can find Angkor Wat and numerous other sacred temples, along with the city itself, which is truly beautiful and enchanting. Ever since he was a little boy, he dreamt of the city, even before he knew its name. So as you can imagine, he wanted to go there, and more specifically, he actually wanted to live there for a period of time, right after his last year of high school. There was a plan involved, and he knew the day that he wanted to move, September 7th. So he had that date in mind, and at the time, he was reading a lot of Neville Goddard, and he realized that he should use his methods for obtaining money to purchase the plane ticket. However, he realized that money wasn't actually what he wanted. He just wanted the ticket. So he changed his intention to that of obtaining a plane ticket to Siem Reap, Cambodia, for the date of September 7th. Using a few ideas that he had gleaned from a couple of books that he had read, he made a list of about four things that he didn't want to come from the intention and about 11 things that he did want to come from the intention. This allowed him to gain clarity and a better and more precise image of the end result. Then he set his due date, 10 days from that, when he was to have the plane ticket. Of course, he needed a plan of some sort, or he thought he did. So he told himself that every night at 9 o'clock, he would spend 11 minutes envisioning, imagining, and almost most importantly, feeling the sensations of having the ticket right in front of him. These sessions were jumbled and somewhat confusing. He visualized the ticket being on the plane, being in Siem Reap, and a bunch of other things that were connected to it, but he didn't really understand the extent of the connection, and he ended up just letting the images and sensations flow over him. However, eventually, he ended up honing in on a specific image scene that was, again, rather disoriented, but it was of him telling his parents that he had purchased the ticket and that he was so excited. In the scene, he said to them, Guys, I just purchased the ticket. To affirm the intended date, he had a vision on a physical calendar of that specific date that he had envisioned and set. Then for nine days, he repeated that scene and felt it, while also allowing his imagination to wander through the scene and the feelings, and it became effortless. During the last four days, he more or less stopped caring. And it was a mixture of knowing that he had already had the ticket, even though he technically didn't at that point, and not really having an expectation or a specific desire. It wasn't really that big of a deal to him anymore. He simply more or less surrendered and let go. And then on the final day, he added up the money that he had earned from his freelance writing, along with receiving a really quick 
$100 job at the process of some older payments of clients that he had. And he had $627. The ticket was $563. So he bought the ticket, and then the imaginal scene ended up playing itself out, just as he had felt it days earlier. Initially, he was fearful, like anything new when you're young. But he didn't so much, again, focus on what the outcome was, for deep within him, he knew that he was going to be okay, and that he was on the right path. Before we end this essay we'll share with you the Neville method that he used, which seems to work every time if you trust in it. So how do you do this? Before we begin, it may be wise to go for a smaller intention before you go for the big one. Something that you aren't particularly attached to and are more or less indifferent to. You can, of course, do this alongside a bigger intention. But for the first time, it's recommended to go for something small. Step one, ask yourself the very important question, what do you want? Well, what do you want? It can be anything, anything at all. So don't dumb it down. Or of course, since this may be your first time, it might be wise to dumb it down a little bit. But after your first time, expand your vision as necessary. Clarify what you want. Let's say for the first intention, you want some small amount of money. Are these 50 US dollars? Write that down. Do you want them in cash? Write that down. Finally, the most important part of it all, what do you intend to use the money for? Is there a goal that you have in mind? Or are you simply trying to see if this process works? Again, write all of this down. In this example, he wanted not only a plane ticket to see him reap, which he wrote down, but to actually move to see him reap, which he wrote down. So step two is what is your end result? Let's say you want this amount of money because you want to buy a lotto ticket that's worth that same amount of money. The end result of what you really want is the larger amount of money that the ticket will get you, not the initial amount of money or the tickets itself. So these sub-obstacles can be the blocks in your path towards this intention of yours. To dissolve this, again, focus on the end result, which is having the final amount of money that the lotto ticket yields you and feeling the feelings that come with that. This is where things get tricky, however, because there are often multiple intentions at work, And it can be a little confusing as to how we get there. So if you want the lotto ticket because you want to win money, then you've created some obstacles. Ask yourself, is the lotto ticket winning money actually really even the end goal? Or is it the things that you hope to acquire with that money in the end? Of course, if you just want the money to prove that this works, then the money is a reasonable initial intention for this first exercise. But if it's just to pay the bills, then go straight to paying off those bills in your intention. If there are multiple end results, then you might need to create something that encapsulates all of them with that single intention. When he set his intention for obtaining the plane ticket, it was feeling the ticket in hand with the feeling of certainty of knowing that he was going to obtain it. If he intended to move a lot sooner, he could have simply envisioned himself on the plane or touching down. But since he was merely concerned with the ticket and simply having it, he envisioned that the feelings that came from that certainty rather than the full end result. Perhaps it might have even been better for him to visualize himself in that foreign country, but nonetheless, the process for him worked. Step three, what is your scene? Visualize it. See it. And it's recommended to give yourself multiple days to visualize this, to simply allow the images of the scene to flood your mind. You can hang on to ones that you like and discard ones that you don't. Simply surrender and allow them to come to you, and they will. From that, you will find that the scene implies the fulfillment of your desire. For him, it was seeing the ticket initially on his computer screen and then eventually in his hand. And that scene was repeated throughout the days and was gradually given in more and more sensory detail and significance as he continued to play it over and over again. Step four, play the scene, feel the feelings. Take a deep breath, in for four, out for four, and do this multiple times until you feel lighter, calmer, relaxed, and content. Close your eyes and begin to let the sensations flood your mind. Keep your intention in focus and then slowly build the scene. If you aren't yet aware of the scene, continue to let the sensations flood your mind and allow the pieces to come together. Don't push or prod, simply let go. When you find a scene that is truly magnificent and necessary for your purposes, play it over and over again. Edit it, trim it down, Capture the implied fulfillment of your intention in a single phrase, and then repeat it. Play it over and over again in your mind. Take the time to add sensory details to the scene. 
Continue it for multiple days, if not longer, until it feels right. When he did this, he spent 11 minutes each day at the same time of the day playing the scene over and over again, more or less meditating on it. Step 5. Let go and surrender. Make sure to do this after each session. On the final day, it will be easy, for you have already done what is necessary, and you will know that there is no need to fear, to struggle, to strain, for all is well. If you have any trouble with this, there are three recommendations that you may want to follow. The first one is to distract yourself right after you finish this session. Work on a project, talk to somebody, make something. Anything that you can think of. Ideally, you're doing something that you enjoy doing and are passionate about, which makes it easier for you to forget about the session that you've just created. The second recommendation is to do with that breathing. Make sure that you do it rhythmically and you're conscious of the cycle of your breathing, which may help release the tension and help you focus on the visualization itself. Finally, the third recommendation is that of saying inside yourself, or maybe even better, aloud, thank you. From this moment on, I let go and surrender. This means you accept which you intend to create, for you are a powerful creator.